Hey everyone, so today we're going to talk about logging and monitoring Kubernetes using Elasticsearch. So a lot of really popular open source stuff going on out there. You've got Kubernetes and you've got Elasticsearch. Um, and so today what we're going to do is we're going to first kind of give you an overall introduction to what the Elastic Stack is. So just by a show of hands, how many folks know what Elasticsearch is? Okay, most people in the audience, so we won't spend too much time there. Um, then we're going to talk a little bit about Elastic's Elasticsearch service. Uh, basically, how do you get that from zero to basically during the session, start something up and try it out. Um, then we're also going to talk a little bit about Kubernetes challenges. So not just what is going on in the Kubernetes landscape, but what are the problems that we're trying to solve and, and really account for, and why Elasticsearch is a really great tool for the, for the job. We're going to talk about logging and monitoring. Um, and then the third piece there, so you have this really nice trifecta of logs, metrics, and APM. How do they all interact and what do they all look like? Um, and then in, uh, in, the, in the middle of the uh, presentation, we'll also go and uh, do a quick demo. So um, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk a little bit about the Elastic Stack. And uh, so a lot of folks here know what Elastic Search is. It's a distributed search engine, does store, search, analysis. Um, and on top of that, you have this visualization layer. So Kibana really help you search and manage all of the stuff that's going on within Elasticsearch. But you also need to get data into Elasticsearch. And the way you do that is through our ingest, or Beats or Logstash. And so Beats is going to be very purposeful, lightweight shippers that go ahead and deploy on your end or edge devices, go ahead and collect, parse, and create meaningful data, and then send them to Elasticsearch. Logstash you could think of as more of an ETL style tool, grabbing large amounts of data, taking in a lot of logs, uh, slurping in network data, and really making it available in a high capacity fashion to, to Elasticsearch. So on the bottom here, you kind of have deployment methodologies. So on the left hand side, we have the Elasticsearch service. So once again, a really quick way to get started, probably the fastest way. Um, and then also what we call Elastic Cloud Enterprise. So our cloud platform is built uh, on top of this really powerful orchestration service, and we offer that to you as a customer if you want to offer Elasticsearch as a service to your end customers as well. So just a quick overview of Elastic's Elasticsearch service. So this is our official Elasticsearch and Kibana solution. Uh, it's spread across nine AWS regions. So really global footprint right now. We're continuing to expand. Uh, and it really lets you get started very, very quickly. And we'll go through a quick demo here uh, right after this. So first, it's all about central management. Uh, Elasticsearch as a distributed workload uh, is, is a really complex product. It has a lot of things you want to make sure you're doing from a storage perspective, has a lot of things you want to be doing from a replication perspective. Um, and then there are other considerations, more day two operations, if you will. How do you log? How do you monitor? How do you manage? Uh, how do you move the data as it uh, comes in at a very frequent basis? Uh, we also have enhanced security. So what Elastic does and builds on top of the Elasticsearch uh, open source is offer a number of commercial features that really enhance for and protect what the core Elastic Stack does. So things such as RBAC and even more fidelity with ABACs or attribute-based access controls on field level, um, encryption, uh, aspects like node-to-node -node TLS, um, as well as really enhanced feature capabilities like machine learning, alerting, monitoring, um, and all of these really come into play as we're going to talk about uh, Kubernetes challenges and how uh, we apply to solving the various challenges that occur there. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and just quickly switch into a demo, just to give everyone a quick view of what the Elasticsearch service is. And go ahead and move that here. So here what you have is essentially Elastic Search Service or Elastic Cloud, um, and you have two deployments. And each of these deployments represents Elastic Search clusters, um, as well as various components, uh, Kibana, things that are also part of the greater Elastic Stack, like our Elastic APM. Um, and on top of this, you also get a really quick view that gives you the ability to view more granular Elasticsearch specific details. So things like sharding not working, things that are unhealthy, configuration changes that may or may not work. 
And as part of that, you can also change and look at the various versions, look at the various regions that this is deployed on, um, and very quickly get into an action of seeing uh, your Elasticsearch and your Kibana deployments and visual, visualizing all the data you want to start sending. So here you have uh, this deployment and we've gone ahead and clicked in. And within this, we can go ahead and see a couple of really powerful things. One is just logs of the Elasticsearch that's running, uh, that's gone ahead and been created for myself. I can go ahead and look at snapshots. Uh, so things like making sure that you're always deploying, not just securely, but also reliably in uh, building a really effective backup layer in case anything does go wrong. And one of the other really big aspects of the Elasticsearch service is we allow you to create uh, very meaningful deployments, so things like uh, hot warm architecture or things optimized for CPU workloads or things optimized for memory workloads. So taking all of the really nice stuff that Amazon offers from an infrastructure perspective, but making it very flexible and scalable so that you can deploy these things one or a hundred times very successfully. So we're going to go ahead and switch back to the slide presentation. And now let's switch, switch pieces here. Let's talk a little bit about Kubernetes and, and challenges. So I'm, I'm hoping that most folks here know what Kubernetes is. But just to give a little uh, refresher or, or piece around the architecture, there's a ton of components involved with Kubernetes. Uh, and these tend to be very distributed. You have things like the API server. You have things like the kubelet. You have things like the kube proxy that's going to be routing all of the various uh, aspects to the specific kubelets. And all of these various components and, and container runtimes and various interfaces that are continually being added on have their own logs, their own metrics, their own visibility aspects. Um, and that kind of fits into some of the things that a lot, of, a lot of other folks are doing. So you have a number of Kubernetes options that build on all of this experience, making it very easy to manage. But there's a different security policies in place. Uh, and then you also have the natural state of, of containerized workloads. So ephemeral workloads that just start up and start go off. So you have a container in pod A and a container in pod B. They might be running the same application. So you really need to know where something is, what namespace, what's going on at a very broad and specific level uh, in order to do some of these more debugging challenges. So let's talk a little bit about that from a visibility perspective. So if you look at all of the data that's coming out of Kubernetes, whether that's logs, metrics, events, alerts, tracing, uh, all of these can go through the infrastructure layer, uh, whether that's running on the EC2 layer or a more above with something like your containers. How does that influence the nodes that you have? How does it influence the container runtime? Uh, and then you also have different stakeholders. So you have your developers, your operations, and they're after different aspects about this visibility. They need to correlate different pieces. They need to visualize different pieces. Uh, and that's really, once again, where Elastic comes in uh, and, and really helps with that trifecta of logs, metrics, as well as application performance uh, monitoring. So let's talk a little bit about logging and monitoring and how the Elastic stack helps with this. Uh, first is around the enriched logging experience. The second is around comprehensive metrics and some of the uh, features that we have around auto discovery and how that helps with scale, the natural skill you want with Kubernetes. And then lastly, immediate visibility. So we're not all experts. We don't have infinite time to go out and build these dashboards. We really need quick turnkey solutions to visualize and get insights. So let's talk about first enriched logging with FileBeat. So once again, FileBeat, part of our Beats platform, part of that ingest architecture, really purposeful built uh, architecture to go ahead, collect logs and data, uh, and then go ahead and ship it. And with Kubernetes, we allow you to do this through a Kubernetes daemon set. And we interact with the Kubernetes API to go ahead and ask, what namespace am I running in? What cluster am I running in? What node am I on? What pod am I in? And by doing that, it really gives you a lot more information. So when you go to go debug or go to correlate, you have that readily available and can start building a lot more information, a lot easier ways to get to that root cause analysis. So comprehensive metric collection. 
So the next bit piece here is, is how do we go about doing metrics collection? So we have what we call a module. So these modules, again, are very purposeful built. Uh, turnkey solutions give you that immediate insights. We'll show you what that looks like here and some of the applications that we support. But we also give you a lot of the sources that don't just span the application inside the containers, but also the uh, actual system components as well. So uh, whether that's the kubelet, uh, whether it's things like Kubernetes events. And we integrate with some of those cloud-native approaches. So if you're doing things already with, around Prometheus, have that metric bead already plug into that, use the module, give you visibility to around Prometheus, um, and also bring in that, that same data to then do the more advanced correlations. And so last bit here is around our infrastructure UI. We'll show a screenshot. That's not actually coming soon. We've shipped it. So we had a really big release with Elasticsearch uh, 6.5. I uh, highly advise you to come to our booth to, to take a look at it. But uh, we'll show some screenshots as to how you can quickly view what's going on. Um, and that's available as part of our, our uh, basic license. Just go ahead and download the product. We'll give you availability also there by default with our uh, cloud solution. So let's talk a little bit about modules. So we turned about this turnkey experience for getting these uh, quick insights for specific data types. Um, they don't just work for metrics. They also do things around logs. They also work for uh, very security-based events as well. Um, and it really allows you to go ahead with one command, take in all of this data coming from all these different places, and then have a quick experience to start visualizing and viewing, doing some more advanced alerting. And so I mentioned we have one for Kubernetes. We also have one for Docker. Uh, it has all the parsing and enrichment logic built in. Um, and then the really nice part is if you're using a lot of the more advanced commercialized features, like machine learning on top of uh, time series data, you want to do anomaly detection, uh, you can very quickly do that. And here's just a quick view of some of the modules that we have. Uh, just, a, just a quick view, and we actually have a lot more that are community-based that uh, can get you started very quickly with monitoring. And so this is a quick view of the Kubernetes module and, and some of the data that it provides. So you know, right off the bat, I have a metric feed. I deploy it. I want to get the module. I install it. Um, and now all of a sudden, I have the view around nodes, how many deployments, how many pods I have desired available, um, along with some performance metrics. And this can, of course, all be customized to make sure it really tunes in with what your operations or your developers are doing. So the next bit here is a really nice feature that we've introduced with our Beats modules and, and the overall Kubernetes story, which is auto discover. So we think about Kubernetes just being this distributed container orchestration layer, but we really also have to think about the applications that we deploy within. So if we're deploying stateless apps like Nginx, or we're deploying stateful apps like MySQL, Postgres, we want to be sure that as we continually to deploy on this very scalable platform, that we have the ability to monitor as soon as it comes up. And it's not something that you need to think about as you're deploying, but it's just auto there. It's just automatically there, and it gives you a lot of visibility. So auto discovery with uh, our beats automatically look out for very popular software like Nginx, MySQL. And as soon as those things get deployed, it will go out, make sure it's collecting the exact logs, the metrics, the same things that are needed that would give you that turnkey integration with the modules. So the next bit here, uh, we talked a little bit about it. This is our infrastructure UI. So uh, taking in all of the really nice data that you're having from various infrastructure, giving you the ability to then start doing a lot of slicing and dicing, whether it's through a namespace, whether through it's a pod, whether through it's a node, um, and, and having the, the quick insight as to seeing where you might have certain pods or containers that are running uh, very excessive with, in, in terms of processing power, taking a lot of CPU cycles, and then being able to click in. And the best part of this UI is since it's inbuilt with Kibana that has the ability with the logs and metrics and our new logs UI, you're going to be able to correlate that data and say, oh, here are the metrics metric beats sending. Here's all of the log data that uh, FileBeat is sending. Um, it makes it very easy to start diving into problems that you can foresee here, um, as well as giving you an overall health view of the system at, at large. 
So one really nice example I, I like to point is, uh, is eBay's example. They, they presented at our Elasticon conference. Um, and so they're using Elasticsearch at, at, and um, Kubernetes at a massive scale just by their, this is a screenshot from one of their dashboards. So you can see 17,000 pods, 2,600 nodes. Um, and so you can, you can go and watch that on our Elastic Co. website and, and how they're going out and looking at petabytes of log data per day. They're using Beats, they're deployed in Kubernetes, um, and they're really using this to help correlate with logs and metrics. And so that's a, a really common use case is I have these two disparate data sources, I'm using two different tools. You can centralize that with Elastic and gain a lot of value um, with, with our Elasticsearch stuff. So just a really nice example, uh, really worthwhile to, to go and look in, at, at that one and get an overview of the a holistic use case there. So let's talk a little bit about tracing. Um, you know, we talked a lot about logs and metrics, but Elastic has, has recently added a lot of power with our application performance monitoring and Elastic APM specifically. And so this goes in with a number of languages, uh, whether that's Go, Ruby, Python, Java, and JavaScript with real-time real user monitoring, uh, and then giving you these, the same views within Kibana but on a very application performance monitoring specific view. So an APM focused look at traces, let me look at distributed tracing, and, and then once again, take all that data and compare it to the metrics, compare it to the logs, give you that correlation ability. So this is just a, a quick GIF of uh, going through the APM UI. So here we have someone uh, looking at the APM UI, they're going and saying, hey, I want to look at this specific customer tier, um, and I want to look at uh, an exceeding transaction that takes X amount of seconds. Um, and once again, lets you visualize in that same UI that you would have the infrastructure, that you'd have all the logs, that you would have all the discovery, helps you pinpoint all of the specific actions, um, and, and really help you get started and diagnose issues. So one general approach that I usually see with a lot of customers is they'll go ahead and when, with their Kubernetes application, within their application themselves, they'll go ahead and instrument APM, they'll have that pointed to an Elasticsearch cluster, and then they'll deploy file beat and metric beat through a daemon set. And a daemon set will make sure that for every new node you have or every node in Kubernetes, you'll have one existence of a file beat and one existence of a metric beat available that will be collecting all this data. And then that pairs very nicely again with auto discovery that makes sure that as you deploy new applications, you're not going out, making sure it's monitored. It's an automatic checkbox versus uh, something that you're manually doing. So in summary, um, you, know, you can go ahead and try out the Elasticsearch service at our elastic.co. Um, definitely check out some more details we have around Kubernetes Elastic Stack. We have a ton of resources out there. Uh, around making sure you can look at Kubernetes holistically and troubleshoot efficiently. Um, and then, of course, we're at Boot916, which is just back there. We can get into a lot more depth, go through Kubernetes examples. Uh, we have some examples of OpenShift if you're interested in that as well. So a ton of great content on our website around Kubernetes in general. And yeah, uh, thank you so much for your time. <laughs>